Hey guys, watch it. Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome all of you to the morning show a little earlier today. I just want to get a good early start. Hey, you're watching Monty's Chat going live right here today on Facebook and I hope around the world. Hey, don't forget to enjoy all the wonders of it all right here at Monty's Chat. Today is a beautiful Sunday and we are having a wonderful time. <laughs> I thought you like Sundays there. I don't do anything on Sunday. Just want to talk to you. Just talk to you there in uh, cyberspace. And uh, you are down in the tropics with me right now. Hey, I hope you're enjoying all the get togethers here on Monty's Chat. Every Sunday, I try to come out at least once a week to make a video. And uh, I am, for those of you who don't know, I am Monty Gago. Uh, husband, father, uh, missionary, world traveler, uh, a jack of all trades, a master of a few things, and I just enjoy talking to you every Sunday right here at Monty's Chat. Yeah. And uh, man, what a week this has been. And I hope you enjoyed last week. We had uh, some friends over all the way from. <laughs> Denmark, can you imagine? And uh, so, so many people try to pop by. Sometimes they came all the way. I hope they had a, they had a wonderful week. They told me they got back safely. For those who of you who tuned in uh, last week and saw them, and uh, real sweet people, you know. And uh, I like I told you, they were really known for many, 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 many years. And uh, back down in the other side of the world, here they came. <laughs> You know, away from the cold and the snow to the sun and lots of fun and they sure did it they swam all week what can you say but anyway this week we're just uh, hanging in here and uh, this week I just wanted to just say thanks for stopping by for all the wonderful comments that I got last week from, from you guys and uh, I just enjoy connecting with you on online every week. Uh, that gets my way of getting out to really meet the public. I don't get out here so much on the island. Uh, I'm doing a lot of right now. I'm doing a lot of carpentry, working on the, the place and uh, building some uh, cabins and nice places for more people to come by and pop by as they are becoming aware of us. And many people are preparing to come and see us and some are already coming and we're very excited to see each and every one of you. Aruba is a nice place. We're down in Aruba. It's a beautiful island that uh, has many wonders and especially sea wonders that uh, I'm sure you would love to experience. So pop by. We're right here and uh, be our guests. And today's Monty's Chat, uh, I just wanted to speak, was to wish you all out there. I just want to encourage all of you guys. I've, I've been traveling around the world online, and it's amazing all the things that Christians are, or believers in God are going through in the world, and uh, commended and persecuted and fought like crazy. And it's, for me, it's almost surreal, like, I am actually witnessing world events that the Bible predicted would happen thousands of years ago. And uh, I do believe and I hope you will begin to see as I do that we are living in the time of the end. That it's, you can't get around it. You just can't. And it's exciting to watch. And it's not a fairy tale. It's not a figment of my imagination. Or your imagination you are just witnessing world events being played out that were predicted 2,000 3,000 4,000 years ago and you are you are living in the time of the end and uh, I'd like to take this time also to commend all of you who love God who, lo who are followers of Christ and who are doing their best for his kingdom I thank you guys when I see some of you guys, I think you're doing a wonderful job, and I'd like you to encourage you to keep going, keep sharing God's love, in spite of a secular, disbelieving world. It doesn't matter if they don't believe. You believe, and God believes. 
<laughs> that's all that matters because at the end of the day, when you stand before God, you're going to be very excited that you did your best for his kingdom and that you obeyed his word to the best of your ability. I mean, you're not perfect, but at least you did something. Some people aren't doing anything. But uh, it says in the Bible that some shall awaken to everlasting life and some shall awaken to everlasting shame and contempt. And uh, I just want to encourage all of you that you have a wonderful gift in store. For those of you who don't know, um, heaven is a beautiful, wonderful place that uh, does exist. It's not a figment of our imagination. I started to watch um, Star Trek again. You know, it's going through different phases and, and it's been uh, promoted quite a lot in movies. Also, there have been regular TV series about Star Trek. And I started watching it and I thought, after a while, I just, it's just the same old storyline. You know, it's just, first of all, it's imaginary. It's not a tree, a truth. It's just a TV program. And I guess just following my childhood thoughts of life, and uh, I watch occasionally sci-fi movies, but I, at one point I just like, this is the same old storyline, and it's just not the truth, you know? And then I thought about how wonderful uh, the kingdom of God is and the wonderful future that we can expect in his kingdom. <laughs> it's true. And this is a true story, you know? I just want to show you that uh, we have a wonderful a wonderful new life that's coming and uh, it's very soon a little picture right there of heaven uh, the wonderful the 12 gates it talks about it in Revelation maybe I'll read to you a little later that uh, we have a wonderful wonderful city that is uh, for us that we that exist right now it's not often storyland somewhere it's not a little it's not a myth it's not pie in the sky but it's a beautiful city that exists right here on earth in our hearts and it also exists in the spirit world and it's a beautiful beautiful city and I wanted to tell you a little more about it and that it does have angels it's full of all the people of all ages that love God, that have gotten saved, that have received the Lord, and uh, it's right there, and it exists in the spirit world. And you, for your good work and for all the love and all the uh, stuff that you've shown to other people, God's love that you've shown by sharing his word, by showing love in all the many different ways. I mean, it was just wonderful to see that uh, the couple last week, they've been working for years in the Middle East, uh, helping and encouraging people, regardless of, of the different religion. Uh, they're just people. As far as, as far as we are they concerned, God's people exist. And if they, everybody will know the real truth of God very soon and that uh, he will reveal himself even more. He, I, I don't know, it's like, it's almost like he could just step out of behind the clouds and just say, here I am. And uh, he, he's not doing that right now, but he's manifesting his love, manifesting himself in many, many different ways through his people. But he will actually be on the earth very soon, uh, walking around here, talking to you. <laughs> it's going to be, it's real. It's not a joke. So I hope you're getting ready because it looks like uh, Jesus is about ready to come very soon. And uh, it's going to be a world of real. I watched this. I watched this uh, video uh, yesterday about uh, this guy who died. He was an activist, a civil rights activist, and uh, he had a heart attack. And he went into the spirit world. It is. I I believe a lot of these these stories because I've experienced travel in the spirit quite a lot myself. But Jesus will be here, and we will have real, true equality. And real love. Jesus is already here, but I said he will manifest himself physically very soon. It's exciting to watch the Bible be fulfilled right before our very eyes. And you can be excited of all the wonderful gifts that you and love that you will receive 
in a world of true equality, that it won't be a make-believe or artificial equality, but it will be true equality where we will all live together in real love under his rule and reign itself. It's not a myth. It's really going to happen. Jesus Christ is coming to earth like he did as a child, but he won't be a child this time. He will be a warrior, a man of God that you will actually see uh, and all the world will see physically the kingdom of God. It's, everybody always has this weird idea that, that heaven is it's, it's a myth, you know, it's uh, because of these other Greek mythology, Roman mythology, uh, a lot of people have ideas about gods being myths or figments of people's imagination, but he really does exist, and you're watching actual physical, tangible events being played out, you know, it's like, oh, a lot of people poo-poo on religion, okay, I, I must say myself, you know, just being religious, it just puff of smoke, poof, it disappears. But an actual, tangible God that really exists, Jesus Christ, he's not a, a myth or a figment of our imaginations, but he really does exist, and he is about ready to manifest himself. There's a few things that you're going through right now in this life that uh, have to be played out. What can I say? And there are many things that people need to learn and uh, I just want to state clearly, so you really understand, not just, you know, you're going through the motions of life and people are telling you all these different things, but I want to tell you facts. This world, I really want to get this across this week, is a school. It's a, a learning place, a learning process that we all have to go through and that we'll be better prepared for the next life also in life, you're learning to be true people and true leaders of God. I mean, all these, you see all these flaky leaders right now who are doing all these things and trying to figure out how, how to work out this program and how to feed people and how to be uh, just, right? But we, in this life, we're all learning about the principles of the Spirit. We're learning about God. We're learning about how things should be done, how uh, you can have real true equality and real love and understanding of all the people on this planet, all the races. And uh, Lord, I just pray that uh, you'll bless this time and that we could really uh, share your truth and share your word and that, that uh, people will understand and receive many of the things I say and I pray that you will speak right now in Jesus' name. Uh, I pray that prayer because I, I really want to get across to you. I really want to just tell you about these things. Not just preach at you, but I just want to just communicate as a friend about all the things uh, that God has in store. But I just wanted to commend all those Christians and all the people who love God and are sharing as much truth as God has shown them about this life. And I just want to say that you, are, you have embarked on a wonderful thing. That's the most important thing, the spirit, because that's forever, you know, and it, there, I, it's funny that I was looking at uh, these uh, cities, these new smart cities that they are proposing for the future, and it, it seems so exciting, you know, even me, and I just, as a kid, I used to really be excited, oh, the future, you know, the cities are going to be all uh, clean, and everything's going to be nice and every and uh, there will be uh, food for everyone and all these things that people have proposed but it just doesn't seem like we can get there because we are we can't get there because it's a fallen world without God and many people of the world have a secular view of the world and they don't have a biblical view of the world and they're just doing things out of self-righteousness that we know as a people on earth should uh, take care of each other. Now they're not knowing that uh, behind the scenes they're just following biblical or godly principles that God has taught us over the centuries about real love. But God's world, it's a really wonderful world 
that exist already in the spirit uh, meaning okay we don't have a physical Jesus walking around and God walking on the earth like he did in the garden because we're still in the last leg of the learning process and uh, the devil is still in charge of many aspects of the world he's not in charge of everything but he controls a lot of it but very soon God will stop it chomp and take back the power that Satan has gained and I'd like to express to you beyond a shadow of a doubt Satan is a actual being some people always they have these real what is it metaphorical idea of Satan and hell and that it's all a story and it's all just a figment of man's imagination hey you can't follow these people because they don't know what they're talking about look the Bible is true it's so many things I, I've, I've been seeing this week where people want you to live a lie and we have all been living a, in a very big lie for thousands of years and the societies that have been created by man uh, have the tendency of lying to the people the, the leaders are the, the the people who are leading the world and people that uh, God has let be in charge have a tendency to follow Satan <laughs> I'm sorry I just had to tell you the truth and uh, they have led us into a lot of lies and a lot of fictitions and oh my god even I mean it's now you know this is the first time in my life that I've ever watched people a lie being tried to be pulled over the eyes and over the ears and over the heads of so many people nowadays uh, this heavy strong uh, pride movement <laughs> I might say years ago everybody was in the closet but now everybody's coming out of the closet and showing their true colors and how they would rather follow lies and it's some of the I mean, just craziest things I don't even want to talk about but you know you know the score right now what's going on with a lot of kids they're trying to tell them because of their secular worldly beliefs that uh, you can be any sex you want and and they're saying all these things because they've rejected the Bible you know and uh, just one other thing if you don't receive the truth you're going to believe a lie and I just actually see these people arguing and discussing with people who don't believe in God and they want you to believe their ideas which are ungodly the ones that are ungodly and and they are very very uh, pushy about their ideas and their beliefs and I, I was just because I was just wondering you know it's like uh, there's for those of you who, who know the Bible and know a little about uh, God and Jesus there's a story of told and it's not a fairy tale it's it's fact there was a city that existed uh, thousands of years ago that was called Sodom and Gomorrah a string of cities and uh, these cities were destroyed uh, because of people disobeying God or because of the the evil that was going on in these cities now people talk to or people who don't believe in God they, they act as if it was a fairy tale but there's actual physical proof of these cities that existed thousands of years ago and uh, God by the way he is a being that lives forever he's from the beginning and he will be at the end and it's the offer and the magus is the beginning and the end of all existence on earth and the things that people did thousands of years ago they're doing it today now God destroyed this city Sodom and Gomorrah because they were just disobeying God and in some of the most grossest evilest way possible like why like even God destroyed the first earth through uh, a flood and uh, those and the little remnants of all a lot of these places after the floods they kept some of the evil practices and God just 
uh, dealt with them. He's like a father, uh, has to deal with his children and, and chastise them and give them training. It's not just God's just evil. <laughs> I just love evil. I just love to kill people. I love to uh, torture people because I just love torture. He's not a masochist, you know. But uh, sometimes it's like he has given us all free will and uh, like a child, he we have to be trained. We have to be taught what is right and what is wrong. You know? And uh, I just was watching this little thing here the other, uh, the other day. And uh, I just want to share this with you because I believe it's something that uh, is happening right now. God is real. He's not a joke. He's not a metaphor. He's not a, a being that, that uh, doesn't exist. But I want to show you this little thing I was watching right here. You might enjoy it. You might uh, like, like it. Here it is. And uh, I want to share this little story, just a little short bit of it, just in case you haven't seen it online. Sodom and, uh, and Gomorrah. Check this out. Just watch a little when bit. When the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. Lot, his wife and daughters, all fled from the terrible destruction of Sodom. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Wicked men were punished by the Lord in a divine judgment of fire. The intense heat consumed the wicked cities and their inhabitants. But Lot's wife looked back toward her beloved Sodom violating the angel's command, and was thus turned into a pillar of salt. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly. The Bible tells us the cities were in the plain of Jordan, which is the area surrounding the Dead Sea, and it was once a beautiful lush area. At 1,300 feet below sea level, this is the lowest place on earth, a very hot and desolate region that was cursed by God because of the sins of the people. Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom, pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. And they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore I took them away as I saw good. Flavius Josephus, the first century Jewish historian, tells us, there are still the remainders of that divine fire and the traces of the five cities are still to be seen. Popular thought has it that the cities were later covered by the waters of the Dead Sea, but if Josephus could see the cities in his day, then we should be able to view them also, as the water level has, if anything, receded since his time. And the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon, as thou comest to Gerar, unto Gaza, as thou goest unto Sodom, and Gomorrah, and Adma, and Zeboim, even unto Lasha. The biblical description tells us the cities were spread out, forming a line along the Canaanite border, not grouped together in one area, as some may think. Driving along the coastal highway of the Dead Sea in Israel, one can soon see peculiar formations that are of a lighter color than the surrounding terrain. These are the ashen cities, destroyed by the wrath of God. These cities were consumed by intense flames, a supernatural heat that was directed by the hand of God. Today there is ash that is of lighter color than the surrounding mountains and terrain. As mentioned in the Bible, this is a desolate area where nothing grows. Inspecting the formations closely, one can see structures containing man-made elements, such as 90-degree angles. Even though the buildings were consumed by the fire, the remaining ash in these cities is comprised of a heavier material due to the inclusion of brimstone or sulfur and still retains some of the, the original, original shapes of man-made structures. structures. 
This stunning structure stands out as a singular formation with four sides, surrounded by a deep moat. We move in closer to inspect the unusual features evident on the side of the formation. On the side of the structure, this swirling pattern is different from any type of sedimentary rock or soil that would normally contain horizontal, even layers. These swirling designs were also seen in other ashen formations in the cities. This is evidence of extreme heat, up to 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit, where thermal ionization occurs, when the electrons repel and attract, forming these unusual swirling designs. In Lot's day, this area was a swirling cauldron of death and destruction, rained down from the Lord in heaven. Strange anomalies can be seen here, such as these fragile layers of material which disintegrate when touched. The limestone buildings in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were totally transformed into ash by the consuming fire of the Lord. Evidence of this destruction is revealed in the white gypsum anomalies in the area, including unusual shapes of chalk-like material, which is not found in other parts of the country. Even layers of white and gray material can also be seen, comprising gypsum and ash. At the time of Elijah on Mount Carmel, the Lord sent down a superheated fire from heaven, consuming the stone altar and sacrifice, turning them into ashes. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust licked up the water that was in the trench. When God unleashes a consuming fire, it will turn stone into ashes. At the perimeter of this city, one can see this amazing sphinx still standing today. It was a pagan symbol positioned at the edge of town and was thought to protect the inhabitants from harm. The sphinx stands alone as a singular structure with a defined shape. This particular sphinx has an obvious demarcation between its face and the soil below it, another sign of a man-made structure placed on top of the soil. Later, we will see another sphinx. From a higher level, a large section of gypsum has fallen down here. It clearly exhibits the alternating layers of white ash that is calcium sulfate, gray ash that is calcium carbonate, One can also find loose or powdery ash that is quite thick and has been deposited next to the formations. The ash is made up of calcium carbonate. So there you have it. It's just, it's, gone. it's a very entailed and intricate video and there are many, many videos online and uh, places. I've never gone to the Promised Land. I've been to many other places in the world, but uh, these places do exist, which uh, leaves the conclusion that these things actually happen. It's a little more intricate than that, a little more detailed, but I just want to show you that, that uh, this stuff does exist, meaning that uh, these things actually happened. And the world itself is just full of indications that the flood, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah and, and many other biblical stories are recounts of, the, of what happened to a particular part of God's spiritual and uh, physical family really happened. Was th these things in the Bible are not fairy tales and the earth itself is a testimony of the veracity of the Bible and the stories that have been told are not myths, they're not uh, theological events that are myth, myth mythological events. You know, they, these things actually happened. There was a flood. 
there was a destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. And I don't really want to emphasize that now because it's just an indication of the sins of man, the disobedience of God. Now this, uh, every time I turn on TV, they're, they're having a tug of war about, uh, especially in America, about uh, pride and all these wonderful things. It's one of those things in Sodom and Gomorrah, which God uh, hated, was pride. It's like, what can you say? Uh, it's just the truth. Now, just because the world followed certain uh, lifestyles and certain ways that they believe were good for them and they wanted to be disobedient doesn't mean it uh, to God that they wanted to live a certain way. doesn't mean it. And God said he didn't want them to live this way. He, want, he showed us very clearly how he wants us to live and the things that we should uh, seek after in life. And you, you got to ask yourself, you got to look at yourself and say, God, you know, at one point, the Bible is the truth. It's just, it's not a fairy tale. I keep telling people, and I tell you, that all the things and promises that God has given and said in the Bible are being realized right now today and will be completed shortly, especially about the events of the end time. And I just wanted to say, I don't want to emphasize all the things that God's going to do to disobedient people. <laughs> How can you say? But the Bible says that the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. And, and the thing is, uh, the people in these cities, they actually forced their beliefs on other people of the city. And it seems to me that uh, I'm very, very much inclined to believe these things are real, also because of the actions of the people of these different communities. Uh, I don't like to bring up these issues a lot more because a, a lot, but uh, I just want to make it clear to all of you who do, who are following a lot of this struggle war that's going on right now between the uh, believers of God and disbelievers of God, that uh, God always prevails. He will win. He will show his hand very soon. He is showing his hands. And uh, they're going to be destroyed. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not a lie. The Bible is the truth. And a lot of the lies that they're trying to dump on us now and make us believe uh, are not going to come to fruition. You know, they're... It's just not going to happen. God's not going to permit his plan to be dwarfed, to, to fail. So I want to encourage all of you that uh, stay strong, keep going on for God, keep loving others for God's kingdom, and keep sharing his truth. Because truth is truth. And eventually, it's going to fail all the lies and all the, the myths that they are trying to put on us right now people who don't believe in God and uh, it's going to blow up in their face like David David killed Goliath you know the children of Israel were delivered from the Egyptians and God's people throughout the age of ages have always won and God has always fulfilled his word he's always kept his promises he said he'd take care of us we don't have to be afraid and sometimes, you know, it's just like you just really go through it. You know, like you know, everybody's seeing like they're getting away with a lot of things that they shouldn't. But uh, eventually, God always puts his hand in. And he actually always steps in and he always fulfills his word. So I'd like to encourage all of you to keep going for God and don't be discouraged. And uh, also, I just want to encourage you again, once again, that we have a wonderful future. Uh, we don't have to despair over what we're going through in the world right now. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. And he is going to overcome all the things that are not good. He's going to get a victory. He's going to win. And you can be happy <laughs> and be encouraged that he has a beautiful future for all of us. And... Uh, one of the most important things I'd like to do right now, I'd like to encourage uh, those of you who don't know Jesus Christ 
to take a minute and think about the things that are going on or around you and just think now just think there must be something behind this because why would ever all of a sudden within a period of two years the whole world go crazy we've been here you've probably lived but some of you may have lived to be you know like if you're a millennial since 2000 everything was going pretty much the same till about uh time COVID hit and it just seems like everybody after COVID just lost their minds <laughs> Especially these political parties, you know, they're doing all these crazy things. So you must have an inclination that something is going on that's not normal. So I will tell you that uh, in that, that in normalities, the the things that are going on that are not normal to you, and it seems wrong, it seems strange. It is, <laughs> you know, you just have to come to your mind. And say, wait, this is not right. So what you're experiencing is the Bible being fulfilled right before your very eyes. You're, you're witnessing the end of the rule of Satan on earth coming to a close very soon. And the reason why the world is going haywire is because they, they're just like Sodom and Gomorrah. Just took it to the backs and then finally God just stepped in. And like uh, the flood, the world became just totally... Thinking evil all the time and doing things that are evil. I mean, it's, it sounds kind of primitive, evil. But they're doing things that are not wrong. They're wrong, that are wrong, that are not good for you, not good for humanity in general, especially with the AI. There's a lot in the Bible about that. But uh, this is not an end-time Bible class. It's just I just want to encourage all of you out there who are doing their best and trying to live a godly life that God's going to reward you and that to keep on fighting and don't be discouraged by all the these crazy events that are going on. Just like David, the, the, you know, Goliath walked out with the, in the, the battle in Israel one time with the uh, Philistines and they just were out there yelling and Goliath came out and said, look, you know, come and fight me, you know, and, uh, and the children of Israel were really scared, you know, and, and, and a lot of people, the warriors of, of the army were scared. But a little simple shepherd boy came out there and with the power and anointing of God himself, he was able to defeat a seasoned warrior. So even though it looks like these people uh, that are want to disobey God and want to pull the, the lie over our head about life and how we should live, looks like they're winning. It looks like they're, you know, like it's very discouraging and disheartening sometimes. But sometimes, you know, you just have to have simple faith like a, like a child, like David came in. And he just, with a rock, let out that rock and killed Goliath. So simplicity, God is pretty much very simple. Even though he seems complex through religion. But God himself is not religious. <laughs> I'm sorry, he isn't. And he's very loving and uh he wants you to know him and he wants you to know his word and he wants you to know that he loves you. And one of the first steps in finding that out is just by receiving Jesus Christ, his son. And, uh, and how do you receive Jesus Christ, uh, God's son? Through asking it into your heart, through asking him to come into your life and reveal himself to you. And I'd like to give this offer to you today that all you have to do is ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart, come into your life, come into your being, you might say. And uh, you do that through prayer, through asking him to come into your life. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And uh, it says that if thou, this is Romans 10, 9 and 10. Shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in that heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Like, even that simple faith as a child just to ask him into your heart. Just like a simple Jesus coming to my heart. You can say a simple prayer, a thoughts or words to God in prayer like Jesus come to my heart, forgive me for my sins and, and give me your gift of eternal life and your wonderful gift of forgiveness of sins through you in Jesus' name and give me a new and better life.
That's what prayer is. Prayer, like I said, is talking to God and just saying whatever you feel. You can express it any way you want to to God. He's right there listening to you. And uh, he loves you. And he wants to encourage you that he has a wonderful uh, life in store for you just by receiving him. Just by receiving God's son, Jesus Christ, into your heart. I know it seems kind of simple. doesn't matter. God works on simplicities. And he's very kind and loving, and he's simple. It's not complicated. Well, a lot of people make him, our religions make him. So I'd like to encourage you all to keep on going in life and uh, receive God's Son and get prepared for all the wonderful new stuff that God has in store for you. He's got a city. It's not a smart city. <laughs> it's not going to be, you know, built uh, in all these wonderful ex, uh, fashions that a lot of people said will happen. I mean, I've, I've been waiting for flying cars for years and all the wonderful promises that man has made about the future and all the wonderful things he was going to do, but he hasn't done it. He hasn't even solved the problems of war, hatred, racism, bigotry, and till now, he still hasn't solved the problem. Hey, why don't we let God solve the problem? And he, how, he, al he has already started to solve the problem. And a lot of us have recognized a lot of the wonderful ways that he can solve a lot of these earthly, worldly problems already through his love and through his son. So, thank God. We have a wonderful, beautiful, wonderful new city that's coming very soon. And uh, some of us call it Space City. It's... A beautiful city that's 1,000 miles, 500 miles wide, 1,500 miles long, and it's tall, and it's beautiful, where there will be no more sin, or, or hell, and destruction, and evil, and disobedience, but, and we'll all live together in love, and love one another, and it's just going to be wonderful, and you won't have to have a lawyer to plead your case against some of these crazy laws that men are making right now, and forcing people to to be crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't want to be go, go crazy. And so I'd like to encourage all of you to keep hanging in there. And don't forget to subscribe to the Monty Cagle uh, YouTube channel. Check out some of the other videos that I have done. That could be an encouragement to you. And I want to encourage all of you to keep on going in life. And don't dis be discouraged. Don't drop out of school. Uh, hang in there and do the best you can. And God will do what you can't. Cry out to him and receive his son and you'll make it to the end and graduate happily into this new wonderful world that's coming very soon. So remember, keep looking up to Jesus and keep hanging in there. And I uh, hope to see you soon. See you next time right here at Monty's Chat. And that's one of some of the things I wanted to chat to you about today. Have a beautiful one and see you soon. Yeah! So have a beautiful Sunday and see you soon. Bye bye!